or CAL, as we call it. My name is Miss Christine, and I am the Director of Children's Ministry. That's my dog, Sonny. And um, I am so glad that you have decided to join Sonny and I today. Say hi, Sonny Bun. <laughs> anyway, my voice hasn't completely come back yet. I've been sick for a couple of weeks, but I did not want to miss another week with you because we are talking about some very important people in the Bible. We are talking about people in the Bible who had to make really hard choices and stand up for their belief in God, even when they were facing danger. A lot of these people were really young when they had to make these choices. And today we're going to learn about a guy named Daniel. And you may have heard this story, but even if you haven't heard this story, watch what happens in the video because the story is really cool. And then I'm going to come back and talk to you at the end. So get ready to watch the Journey Today show. Hey 
Hey, fellow Ding Dongs, it's me, David. Look what I found. It's a live electrical wire. You know what that means. It's time for the live wire challenge. David, no! What are you doing? That's dangerous. You can't touch that. Camille, it's fine. It's the newest internet craze. It's called the live wire challenge. So basically, you find a live electrical wire and you touch it. Uh, don't worry, everybody on the Ding Dong app is doing it. No, not everybody is doing it. Well, not the smart people anyway. Camille, would millions of people on the internet steer me wrong? I don't think so. Sorry about that, Ding Dongs. Captain Cautious here is trying to crush my vibe. Anyway, it's time to power up in three, Two, one. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jelly Tornado Show. My name is Camille. David, are you okay? <laughs> oh, hey, Britain. Where did you come from? Um, I'm not Britain. It's me, Camille. This is the Journey Today Show. Oh, uh, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> David, what were you thinking? Touching a live electrical wire is a really bad idea. You should never do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Where were you a minute ago? I was right here telling you not to touch the wire. What? I don't remember that. I, I mean, you could have at least said something like, David, no, what are you doing? That's dangerous. You can't touch that. That is literally what I said. Hey, Producer Jordan, can you play the video back so he can see? David, no! What are you doing? That's dangerous! You can't touch that! Oh, wow. I guess that electricity turned my brain to mush. Yeah. What were you thinking? Why would you do that? Well, I guess it just seemed like everyone else was doing it, so I wanted to do it too. Yeah, that's called following the crowd, and that can get you into big trouble. Sometimes you have to do the opposite of what the crowd is doing. In fact, that's exactly what Daniel did in today's true Bible story. Ooh, are you talking about the story of Daniel in the lion's den? <laughs> Producer Jordan, what was that? Uh... When you touch that live wire, uh, you cause a glitch in our editing software. Now, every time you say lion, well, that happens. Okay. Anyway, in the story of Daniel and the lion's den, the king passed a law that says Everyone has to pray to him, not God. And if they refuse to do it, then they would get thrown into a lion's den. But when Daniel found out... Actually, instead of telling the whole story, why don't we have them read it for themselves? Here's how. In just a second, press pause, then open your Bible and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play, and we'll see you back here. <sighs> Isn't that incredible? Even though everyone else was praying to the king, Daniel still prayed to the one true God. Hey, do you think that that was easy for Daniel? Maybe, but... Probably not. Sometimes it's easier to keep your eyes on other people and do what they're doing. Oh, you mean just like you did on the Ding Dong app. 
Uh, yeah, kind of like that. And you know, I learned this the hard way, but sometimes following the crowd leads you to do some pretty crazy things. In fact, I'm thinking of a challenge that shows you what I'm talking about. Are you ready for a crazy game of follow the leader? Sure, let's do it. Who's the leader? I am, and you're the follower. But the challenge is pretty simple. All you have to do is watch me and do exactly what I do. You're not going to touch an electrical wire, are you? No way. If you ever see an electrical wire, kids, stay away from it. No, I, I promise, nothing dangerous. All right, anything you can do, I can do better, so bring it on. Challenge accepted. Here we go. Okay, okay. Oh, outside, outside, ah, ah, ah. All right. You did. Thanks. So, what do I win? Uh, leftover pie? Uh, no thanks. Oh my goodness. I, I have to say, that move with the pie at the end was a little bit questionable. But overall, you were pretty good at that. Thanks. And you're right. You had me doing some pretty crazy things there. Exactly. Uh, but that's kind of like what we do in our life sometimes. We keep our eyes on the people around us and do what they are doing. We make them the leader of our life. We talk like them. We act like them. We do what they're doing even when they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, totally. In fact, our Bible verse for today warns us against that. Here's what it says. Do not follow the crowd when they do what is wrong. Exodus 23, 2. It's so easy to just do what everyone else is doing. It's easy to act like the people around us or the people we see on TV or the internet even if they're doing the wrong thing. But we don't have to. We can make the same choice that Daniel did. We can make God 
the leader of our life. That's right. Daniel trusted God to lead his life. So he made the choice to follow God instead of the crowd. And because of that, Daniel came out without a single scratch from the lion's den. Oh man, I had almost forgotten about that. You know, God wants to be the leader of your life too. So you can follow him instead of the crowd. Yeah, when you follow the crowd in doing what's wrong, it causes nothing but trouble. But when you follow God and do what's right like Daniel did, God blesses you. He fills you with joy and he helps you live the best life possible. You are so right. And that actually makes me think of some questions. Why do you think it's so tempting to follow the crowd and do what everyone else is doing? Also, how do you think your life would be different if you always followed God instead of the crowd? Press pause and discuss. Hey, everybody, welcome back. I think it's important for us to remember that we all make mistakes sometimes. As hard as we try, we still mess up and follow the crowd when they do the wrong thing. Right. But the wonderful thing about God is that he forgives us. He gave us his son, Jesus, so that our sins could be washed away and we can live forever with him in heaven. Man, that is so true. You're not lying. What? I said lion, not lion. Oh, come on! David, let's just stop. It's time to say bye anyway. <sighs> Fine. Once again, everybody, thanks for hanging out with us. We had so much fun with you. For sure. Let's do it again next week. In the meantime, don't go touching electrical wires or any other crazy things you see on the internet. Yeah, because if you do, you might be lying in a hospital bed. Oh, really? You can't be serious. Just say bye, David. <sighs> Fine. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hey, Ding Dongs. It's me, David. You've all heard of the latest craze. Yeah, that's right. It's the Kiss of Porcupine Challenge. And you're never going to believe what I found in the woods. <clears throat> uh, I found my friend Camille who has reminded me never to do crazy internet challenges. Thanks, Camille. Hot dog! Hot chicken dog! Welcome back. Wow, can you believe that? Can you imagine having to face those lions, all those hungry lions by yourself? But God saved Daniel. God was with Daniel and God protected Daniel. And that's the message here is that when we choose God and we choose to trust God, God is with us. God will provide for us. God will help us and God will protect us even when we have to make those really, really hard choices. So this week, I want you to pay attention to the hard choices that you have to make. Sometimes you don't have to face hard choices, and that's great. But if you do have to make hard choices, ask God for help, and then thank God for making you strong enough to deal with those hard choices, just like Daniel was was able to deal with that hard choice. Now, hopefully you won't be facing any hungry lions this week. But sometimes, whenever we get worried about things at school, when we worry about tests or other schoolwork we have to do, or maybe having to be alone on the playground with nobody to play with, those can feel just as scary as having hungry lions threaten us. So when you experience those types of things or anything else that's big and scary to you, just ask God silently. 
silently in your mind for help. You can pray to God. You can thank God for being with you because God is always with you no matter what. God is with all of us who believe in God. So that's what I want you to do this week. Pay attention to those things that feel like challenges or scary things and ask God for help. So let's close out with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we know it's hard sometimes to have to face the things that we have to face at school, at home, in other areas of our lives. But we know that you're with us. Please help us to remember to turn to you and ask you for help. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, so we are entering our very, very, very busy season of Advent, which leads us up to Christmas in a few weeks, believe it or not. So I hope you will come back and join me the next few weeks. Even after Christmas, there will be new cows available. We don't take a break during the Christmas season or the holiday for that. Even when we don't have programs at church, we still have cow. So whatever you're doing this holiday season, I hope you have fun. I hope you remember the reason for the season, which is celebrating and remembering the birth of Jesus. Jesus. And I hope that you will feel close to God. And if you don't, remember to put your hand on your heart and say, thank you, God, for loving me. As you say your breath prayer, you breathe in, you say, thank you, God, for loving me. And you breathe out and you do that as many times as you need because God is with us. Until I see you next time. Bye-bye.